In this lesson, we're doing 9-2 logarithms, and there are lots of different log equations in this chapter, so we're only covering a, a small few of these types of problems. So we're first going to cover a 1 to 1, that's when you have a log with the same base on both sides. So here we have log base 5 equals another log base 5, so that's called a 1 to 1. And then notice that this one's not a 1 to 1. You only have log base 2 on one side, but you don't have a log base 2 on the other side. So this is not a 1 to 1. we got to do it differently. And then, of course, we have our inequalities. So that's what we're going to look at today. So here we go. Why that keeps moving over there. So here we have our log base 5 and it's equal to another log base 5. So when you have a 1 to 1 it makes sense that the of parts would have to be equal to each other. So because it's a 1 to 1 we can set the of parts of each of the logs equal to each other. And as you can see here, we have a quadratic equation, so we have to use our quadratic skills to solve this. So completing the square, quadratic formula, factoring, whichever way you particularly want is fine. It doesn't really matter, but I like to use the factoring if it's easier. Um, so if I was going to use a quadratic formula, A would be 1, B would be negative 2, and C would be, sorry, A would be 1, B would be negative 1 and C would be negative 2. But I'm going to go ahead and use my factoring skills. So I can use the diamond problem. Many of you probably learned the diamond problem can only be used if the coefficient's 1. Um, the constant goes on top, and the linear coefficient goes on the bottom, and you multiply the two side numbers. What multiplies to give you negative 2, and at the same time adds up to give you 1. So of course the answer to that is negative 2 and positive 1. If you certainly don't have to do it that way, if you already know what the answer is, or you just kind of guess and check in your head, or you've been taught another method, um, that's great. So once we factor it, always do a quick double check and make sure if I multiply this out, it really does give me that trinomial back. So now we can use a zero property since it says x minus 2 times x plus 1. That means one of these factors has to equal 0. So we're going to set them equal to 0 using the zero property and then use our algebra skills since it's a linear equation and of course really could have done this in our head but I just wanted to show all the different steps so we nearly now need to double check our answers and make sure they're not extraneous so we need to make sure that when we plug x in it doesn't make any of these of parts negative so you can see when we plug in 2, 2 squared is 4 minus 2. That's still positive, and that's positive. So x equals 2 is okay. But when you plug in negative 1 here, um, you work that out, you'll get a negative. But we really didn't need to see that because when you plug in negative 1 there, that makes the of part negative. So we can already see that this is going to be extraneous. So only x equals 2 is the only answer. So again, you must always test your answers for extraneous roots, meaning that the of parts can never be negative. So when you plug your variable in, the of parts of the log are not allowed to be negative. Okay, this one you can see that we do not have the same logs on both sides. We only have a log on one side. So we are going to use um, rewrite the log in exponential notation. So x plus 4 equals 2 cubed. So I'm assuming we've already covered that in a different lesson. So x plus 4 equals 2 cubed. And of course we could have just quickly have gone and said x plus 4 equals 2 cubed, and of course 2 cubed is 8. And then since that's a linear equation, we can just use our regular algebra skills, and we get x equals 4. 
and don't forget we got to plug 4 back in. Does it make the of part negative? Nope, 4 plus 4 is 8. That's a positive number, so we're good. So it's not extraneous. Here we have a similar problem where we have um, just one log on one side. We don't have a log on both sides, so we're going to use the rewriting the log in exponential notation. Um, so we write 27 is equal to, now remember x plus 6 is the base, so x plus 6 is the base, and it's being raised to the third power. So now we have to solve this cubic equation. And to solve this cubic equation, we can undo it, raising something to the third power. We can undo that by taking the cubic root of both sides. And when you take the cubic root of both sides, that gives you just x plus 6 on this side. And um, that, of course, is 3, because 27 can be written as 3 cubed. So I'm assuming you know how to do that already. So here we get that x equals negative 3. So we need to make sure that the base, so for the, for the base, you need to make sure that the base is always got to be a positive number. So the b for base must be positive. And at the same time, b is not allowed to be 1 either. So when we take negative 3 and plug that in, you can see that we'll be okay. It's a little sloppy, but that's going to give you negative 3 plus 3. Oops, that's supposed to be a 6 because that wouldn't work out. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And is that a true statement? So we'll put a question mark in there. Does that really work? Yep, because 3 cubed is 27. So you can see it really does work. So negative 3 is okay, as long as it doesn't make the base 1, and as long as it's positive. Okay, on this example we have an inequality, and when it's greater than, it's a little bit simpler. So when you have a log that is greater than something, it's a little bit easier. When it's less than, it's a little bit more complicated. So basically, we have a log on one side, so it's not a one-to-one. -one. So we're just going to rewrite this using exponential notation. So we're going to say that n is greater than one-ninth, because one-ninth is the base, and one-ninth is being raised to the negative one-half power. So you can see that you get a lot of overlapping in this particular chapter. We assume you have certain skills from other chapters. So if you remember from this chapter, if I reciprocate, so let's just leave this. We can't leave our answer that way. If we reciprocate the 1 ninth and make it 9, then that will change the sign to a positive. Now, if you're really wondering why that is, I guess I could explain it another way, that if I change 1 ninth, to 9, then that becomes 9 to the negative 1, which is being raised to the negative 1 half power. So when you have a power to power you multiply, that's why that comes out to be positive 1 half. So hopefully that makes sense. And then you can handle this problem a couple different ways. So there's just, oh, math can be so confusing. So isn't 9 to the 1 half power, you should have learned in another unit, that that also means the square root of 9, which of course is 3. So that's one way you could have seen that. Or couldn't you have replaced 9 if you wanted to as another way of doing it? Couldn't you have replaced 9 with 3 squared? And that's being raised to the 1 half power. And then when you multiply a power to a power, doesn't that just give you 3 to the first power, which of course is just 3. So it doesn't matter how you do it. Your final answer comes out to be 9 is greater than 3 or n, sorry, n is greater than 3. So any number greater than 3 will make this sentence true. Okay, so this was for greater than, but it's a little bit different when it's less than. So let's look at a less than 1. So here you have a less than symbol. 
and when it's a less than symbol, you have to make sure, you have to remember that the of part cannot be negative. So remember this, this of part is not allowed to be negative. So we got to kind of keep that in mind. So 2a minus 1 must be positive. Which doesn't that mean that 2a minus 1 has to be greater than 0? So here's how we're going to do this problem. We're going to say that 2a minus 1 has to be less than 3 to the 4th power. But at the same time, 2a minus 1 must also be positive. So we're saying it also has to be greater than 0. Okay, so let's say that again. So we've got 2a minus 1 has to be less than 3 to the 4th power, but at the same time, this is not allowed to be negative, meaning it has to be positive. So therefore, 2a minus 1 must also be greater than 0. So then we just have to solve this compound inequality, which you learned maybe in first semester. 3 to the 4th power is going to be 81, and then we can solve this any compound by getting to a to be by itself. What you do to the center, you have to do to both ends. And then okay, so that's how you do that problem. So you got that little little added information there. You might want to go look at a textbook or maybe watch this video again to see it over again. Okay, last problem. Whew. Okay, here we go. So here we have an inequality again, right? Inequality. And this time you have a one-to-one. -one, so you have a log on both sides. So because we have a log on both sides, we don't have that issue here. So we have that Since we're doing a one-to-one, -one, we basically have to say that this of part has to be less than this of part. So we have that one-to-one -one situation. So we can say that 3y minus 2 has to be less than 6. And we can use our algebra skills. Thanks goodness it was linear. So y has to be less than 8 thirds. Or if you wanted to write that, you could write that as y has to be less than 2 and 2 thirds. Or of course, you could say 2.6 with a bar over it. Either way, it's fine. OK, so again, there are lots of different types of log equations. This is one lesson on just a few different problems.